We still do seven NUFC Matters show a week for free. But if you want to help support NUFC Matters, then there are a few ways of doing it. Hit the like button on each live broadcast and video. This helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button and select the all notifications bell so you don't miss a single show. If you want to help us financially, then you can join the channel using this button with the membership starting at $1.99 a month. Or you can drop us a donation in the chat using a super sticker. We're also looking for sponsors. If you'd like your brand advertised on the flies for the show and featured during the ad break, then email john at nufcmatters.com to arrange today. Good evening. Welcome to NUFC Matters. Live Q&A with me, Steve Wraith. Uh, the reason we started doing these is because I tend not to get a word in when I'm doing the shows with other people. So uh, uh, it was just for you, uh, the audience, the uh, subscribers, the uh, the people who watch the channel, to uh, have, a, have a chat with me and ask us a few questions. So um, here we go. Um, lots of good questions coming in already. I'll start, first of all, with one that I got on Facebook this morning. It was uh, from Stephen Kennedy. He said, Steve, a question for tonight's show. Where and how frequently do you get your ideas for your poetry? When I used to write and create ideas, uh, they would come to me at any time in the 80s and 90s. I used to carry a little dictaphone in my pocket and just record my ideas. I'd walk miles with the dog and have most of my best stuff jump into my mind as we walked. On a productive day, I could leave the house on a day off at about 10 o'clock in the morning and not get back until after tea time. When I met and married my wife, I had to resort to a notebook and pen at the side of the bed, and she was not happy being woken up with me talking rubbish into my recorder at stupid o'clock in the morning. A lot of my ideas formed uh, just as I was falling asleep. Is this the same with you, or do you set aside the time? You know what, Stephen? That's a great question, um, and I think any creative person would... Uh, you know, would, would probably give you a different answer uh, to that. Everyone works in different ways. Um, poetry is something that you, you either have all the time or you, you visit and you go back to it. And I wrote a lot of poetry as a kid. Um, I got into the doors and Jim Morrison and, and read a lot of poetry in that period. And I wrote probably over 250 poems you know, over the, over the course of two years. I eventually published them in a book with, um, with Charlie Salvador. Uh, which I brought out a couple of years ago. It was a limited edition book. Uh, he did his artwork, and he did artwork, of course, for, for my poems and for his. But this year, you'll have noticed, those of you who follow us on uh, s certain social media platforms, you'll have noticed I've started poems again. Well, this is because, obviously, I've, I've written a film script, had it produced, and, and had it, you know, it's out there, it's distributed now, and it's doing very well. Um, this year, I wanted to write a play, and... I thought, how can I get back into that creative writing without thinking about writing a film? How can I get back into that kind of way? So for two two things, um, I I took on a, a creative writing course for the first half of the year at the Theatre Royal, which I went and did, and I've completed now. That, gave us the, that got the juices flowing. But I also committed to one of my friends that I would write a poem a day. Now, that was a New Year's resolution, um, which, you know, you would think you would start on the 1st of January. But I'm one of these people who, you know, if you start a diet, you don't start it on Monday. Otherwise, you know, you, you put it off, you put it off. So I, I actually started my challenge early. So I started the challenge on the 19th of December last year. And so far, since the 19th of December, I've managed to write a poem a day. Um, a, a little bit like you, I'll get ideas when I'm out and about. And I, I literally do have to stop and make a note on my phone if I get stuff like that. Or if I'm traveling on a train and I get something, I'll make a note you know, on, on, on the notes section on my phone. Um, I don't quite go down the old Alan Partridge route. 
uh, the Steve Coogan character and uh, record into a dictaphone. Although I know that's the way a lot of people used to do things back in the past. And Stephen, you just said you did that. Um, but yeah, I, you know, as a creative, I do stop and jot things down because you're quite right. If you don't jot it down at the time, you'll miss things. And have I had moments where I've been lying in bed? Yeah, but you know what? It tends to be when I'm waking up and I'll wake up at maybe half four, five o'clock. You know, like like most men of my age, you go to the loo, you'll get back to bed and then suddenly your mind starts ticking over and you're thinking of things. And there's been many a time where I've ended up sticking my phone on and, and making a note about something, but it's usually something creative. So, yeah, you, you know, everything that you've asked, everything you've mentioned there, Stephen, I can relate to. And Stephen, I'm, I'm absolutely, um, you know... Uh, well, I'm really interested in knowing what you used to write. Um, so maybe drop us a message back on Facebook and let us know because, you know, I, I'm just, well, I'm, I'm fascinated in what you used to write. Um, you know what? I, I mean, I do write poems every day and, and I wrote one today. So my challenge today, and I, I found time to do it. I sat down and didn't know what I was going to write about today. So my poem today was, am I normal? I really don't know. Can anyone tell me it's causing me war? I butter my toast when it's cold, not hot. I like milk on my cereal, filled to the top. I put water on my tea bag, then I add milk. I do the same with my coffee. I'm of that ilk. On a baking sandwich, I just wait and see. Sometimes I like Heinz, sometimes it's HP. I love a red wine, but I won't drink a lager. I love spicy curries and nice cheese from the larder. I love going on walks, but I can't drive a car. I like watching telly and going to bars. Some of these things you will like and agree. Some you might hate and feel like questioning me. So who was right? Who was wrong? Is there an answer? Please don't prolong. Nobody's normal, wrong or right. We are all individuals. We can live our own life. There you go. That's today's poem shared with you. So I uh, hope you liked it. And Stephen, I hope you liked the answer. Um, so you get how it works. You ask us a question. I'll do my best to answer it. Good evening, everybody in the chat. It is subscribers only tonight. If you haven't subscribed, you must hit the subscribe button. I do seven shows a week for free. Um, and and ultimately for me, the last, the, you know, the littlest thing we can ask you to do is just subscribe to the channel. Gets the numbers up and it helps us. And it, it doesn't cost you anything if you hit the subscribe button. That's all we're asking. Ian, good evening, mate. Uh, Ian of the Fans Forum. It says, question for Steve. Uh, of all the football people you have interviewed over the years, who do you think has touched your heart the most and for what reason? This can be a superstar or a normal fan. Um, of all the football people I've interviewed, um, it's a difficult one because you say, touched your heart. And do football players touch my heart? Um, I can be, I can be excited to meet them, I guess, but, I wouldn't say there's been a particular footballer that's touched me hard. I think, I think I haven't shared the stage and questioned Alan Shearer on three occasions. That's probably that's the pinnacle in in a lot of ways for me because, you know, who gets a chance to interview, you know, the best striker we've ever had at the club? Not once, not twice, but three times. In fact, I've promoted him. I've done shows with him five times. I've, I've allowed other people to do the interview on two occasions. But on three occasions, I've actually sat with a great man myself. So Shearer is probably the one that has, has had the most effect. Peter Beardsley, because he's my favourite player. I've interviewed Peter many times. And working with Peter is a pleasure. Um, Peter, has not, I've not had the... I've not had a show... I've not had one show the same with Peter. We can... We get, we get. If you, those of you who come to see it, the first half of the show is is always very similar. I can ask Peter one question, and he, he probably goes on and answers me next five without me asking a question. But listening to what Peter's listening to Peter's answers, he's great, and he's a mind of information, and he's had such a wonderful career, um, and he was such a wonderful player that being able to listen to Peter, I could listen to Peter all day. I really could. Um, other other players. Um, that I've interviewed Gordon Banks. I interviewed him. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on this YouTube channel. Um, that was fascinating. Interviewing the man who was in goal in the World Cup final that we won in '66, and I interviewed Sir Jeff Hurst as well. So those two were those two were of interest. Super Mac is great. I, I mean, probably I've worked with Super Mac the longest. Uh, my first my first show with Super Mac was 1995. 
and I've never looked back since then. I, you know, I, I learned I learned how to be, you know, an interviewer and a comp there working alongside Super Mac and, and doing stuff, you know, w- with him on the stage. Um, so Super Max, you know, is always going to have a, a you know a, a place a place in my heart. If you're looking for other other people I've interviewed, um, two completely opposite ends of the spectrum here. Floyd Mayweather, not my favorite boxer, but a lot of people's favorite boxer. I was always a Manny Pacquiao fan, but to interview Floyd Mayweather on stage at the City Hall on my show just before lockdown was fascinating. Um, you know, we we had virtually a sellout crowd there. And he came off stage and said it was the best interview he'd ever done in that, you know, in, in the UK on, on that tour. And I, I couldn't, that was a lovely compliment to me. Um, that was, that was interesting um, to, to be able to do that. And on the true crime spectrum, Henry Hill, um, the man who Goodfellas, the, the Goodfellas film was written about, um, you know, I brought him to the UK along with uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, we put him on in the Tyneside Cinema. We sat and watched Goodfellas uh, with a with a, an audience of about a hundred people, and then I did a, a live Q and A with him. Um, fascinating guy, fascinating story. And only a few months later, when he when he arrived back in America, he passed away. You know, so um, that's a that's a pretty comprehensive list, I think, of people who I've interviewed who, you know, who you know have, have probably made a made a big impression. I've interviewed lots and lots of people, um, you know, over the years. Some of them multiple times. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, in a lot of instances, I've, I've chosen to give other people the opportunity, you know, like John Gibson, Joe Allen. They've all they've all done the interviews. Mick Lowe's in the past, um, and I've I've just promoted and sold the tickets and then sat back and enjoyed the night like everybody else. But um, specifically those those particular shows, I I did the interviews. Is the one I regret not interviewing probably Mike Tyson. I think I could have done a really good interview with Mike. I promoted him twice and brought him to the northeast twice. Mike, Mike was my boxing hero. Um, and, and I probably regret not interviewing him now, you know, and, and the fact that he can't come back to the UK yet is is a big disappointment. But, um, you know, I, I don't do as many shows now. I mean, especially with boxing, I've done I've done them all, um, you know, many of them three or four times. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to be able to, I'd love to be able to bring one or two more names to, to Tyneside, but we'll, we'll wait and see. There is one in the often towards the back end of this year we'll see whether that comes off and whether i get the opportunity of uh of interviewing that person fa cup replays tom wants to know about do you think fa cup replays will be scrapped well the answer is yes it's been announced today tom um they are going to do that uh and roger mentions it fa cup without replays i'm not i'm not too keen on it uh to be honest i always enjoyed a replay um tom roger and I understand why they're doing it. I understand, you know, it's an extra game. You know, if you if you end up with a couple, but I, I think in a lot of a lot of the things that they're bringing in at the moment and changing, you know, I, I think you know, sometimes it's half-hearted. Sometimes it's sometimes they're doing things for the right reason. Sometimes they're doing things for the wrong reason. Um, I can understand why they're doing this. Um, I, I'm not sure. I haven't looked into it today. I've been busy. I've been busy, but I. I genuinely, I, I I genuinely think that if they're going to decide it on penalty shootouts, it's such a frustrating way to go. But what else can you do? I I prefer the golden goal, Roger Tom. I'd, I prefer the golden goal in football. I think when the trial that was it at the World Cup, I thought that was great. I think if you do that in the FA Cup and the League Cup, for example. I think you would have more exciting games because I think teams would go for it, especially Premier League teams who are in Europe as well. They don't want to. They don't want to work. They don't want an extra half an hour, forty-five minutes in in a game. Uh, they want the game finished. So I think teams would be more pressed to get a result in normal time. Um, so if we're going to do it, scrap the penalty shootout and bring back the golden goal, or bring in the golden goal. That's what I would do. But if you cut without replays, I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, but I think it's got to be across the board for everything. I think it's got to be the same across the board for everything. And I think as well with um, for VAR, for example. You know, in the FA Cup and the League Cup, if a ground hasn't got VAR, if you're playing a championship team which doesn't have the capabilities, we don't have VAR in the game. And I think that's wrong. So I think in the FA Cup and the League Cup, because no, not all teams can have VAR, I think you play the, you play the competition without VAR. And if that means that 
you know, we have to have referees who are coming into the game who aren't used to having VAR, then let, so be it. You know, um, you know, we, because I, because I do think that referees who have VAR all the time are more uh, more aligned now. They're reliant on VAR to pick up decisions that they miss. So I don't know, but it, it, it's my suggestion that that's my suggestion. You know, scrap VAR and cup competitions because it's not a fair playing field. If one one game has it and one game doesn't, scrap the replays. Great, I agree with that. But bring back the golden goal. That's what I would say. Moza, good evening. Steve, were you at the Central Arcade yesterday when they were filming? If not, you have a double. No, it wasn't me. I've had a busy week this week, but nothing nothing acting related. Um, so, no, it wasn't me. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, they, they, they were filming with, with, with regards to something to do with Newcastle United, weren't they? Um, I've, I've heard that. But, yeah, man of mystery. Yeah, I do these in the dark, as you know. I do like to do that. Um, it's just, it means I can chill out. Uh, Jason, I presume this is a... Oh, yeah, I can see the second part of your question. Would you have liked to work on the doors with Billy Whitehurst by your side? Well, I did promote Billy Whitehurst once. Um, in fact, I believe the only talking he ever did in Newcastle was with me and Joe Allen at a bar, at a bar that was at the time called Fluid Bar. And we used to do the pre-match in there, the Joe Allen talking. And Joe used to do the talkings. I used to promote it and... We we got Billy in, and Billy hadn't done one before, was a bit nervous, but was up for it. But he wanted to meet Joe at the Irish Centre before they came to the to, to Fluid Bar. So 10 pints of Guinness later, Billy turns up, grabs the microphone, um, the bar's chocolate block. And you've got to bear in mind, if you know the history of Billy Whitehurst, the last time we saw Billy at St James's Park, he stuck the Vs up at the fans. And he got booed and spat at and all of that. So he gets in, gets the mic and starts singing My Way by Frank Sinatra. Well, of course, the whole place, uh, the whole place went up. Everyone was over the moon, delighted, round of applause. And then I heard probably one of the most honest and frank interviews from a former Newcastle United player that I've ever heard. And he got straight into it. He, Joe never really got, and those of you who know Joe Allen, Joe really didn't get a word in edgeways. Because Billy basically went into why he left Newcastle and why he stuck the V's up that day. And it was because he was being spat at before he stuck the V's up. He was sticking the V's up, not at the supporters as he was going off the pitch, but he was sticking his fingers up at those who were spitting at him through that tunnel that Newcastle used to have, an external tunnel, if you remember. And um, as soon as he, you know, he just won the supporters over. He won the supporters over that day. And he did about 15 or 16 minutes. That was all he did. Uh, and then he stood and had a drink with the fans. But um, an absolutely, you know, a top bloke, a sound bloke, and somebody who who ultimately, um, you know, well, you know, wasn't wasn't the greatest player. But he, as Joe Allen describes him, he was as hard as goat's knees, Jason. That's where Joe Allen described him. And uh, he put him up there with Mick Harford, I think, as, um, you know, as... as you know, one of the hardest blokes in football. I hope that answers your question. Um, I wasn't aware of your poetry, Steve. Where can these be seen? Um, well, I, to be honest, mate, the, they weren't supposed to be for public display. Um, a mate of mine called Adrian, who is the manager of Bad Manners, um, he's also a top clarinet player. And he's just recently played at Ronnie Scott's club, which, again, those of you who see, uh, see what I post on social media, um, we'll we'll know that I was down there giving him some support. Uh, he's he's a top 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 guy, top clarinet player. But he was the guy who I promised to send the poetry to. So, uh, you know, I send him one a day, and he he loves it. But that that gave me the incentive, right? I've got to send it to somebody. I'm going to send it to somebody, and that's it. I never intended to share it until I I did one, which was about recovery. Um, and yeah, I've mentioned Joe Allen a couple of times. Joe Allen is in recovery. He's in recovery from from alcohol. Um, he is an alcoholic, and Joe and I have been friends for for many many years. And after seeing Joe, um, what well, a couple of months back now, when he come back out of uh, you know out of rehab, I um, I wrote a poem about recovery and I sent it to him, and he he loved it, and he says you should share that as many people as can as they can should see that. So that's what I did. I just stuck it on my social media and it got, yeah, it got good traction. But 
I thought, you know what? I shouldn't be I shouldn't be shy of sharing my poetry. I should I should share it. Um, so I don't I don't have people on Facebook who I don't know. Um, you know, I, 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 my mantra on Facebook has always been then if I were, if I recognise this person in the street when I come in towards us, then I'll add them to my Facebook. If I don't know who they are, then I'm not going to add them because you know I don't put anything personal on there. I'm I'm always very careful about what I put on social media. I don't put you know family, you know relatives, close friends, and stuff up there. Um, but yeah, I, I just I just thought I'd share it with them. That's an audience, and with the exception of maybe one or two, one person picks us up on grammar. Got no problem with that. It was never my strongest suit. Um, bearing in mind, I take these into my iPhone and then just stick them up there. It, it's um, and, and then another person did criticize them. She criticized, she criticized the way that they were written. I think she said they were childlike. It's the rhyming couplets, that's what I do, the rhyming couplets, but it's poetry nonetheless. So, I did what I did was rather than respond to her in a um, in a in a particular fashion, I, I decided to write a poem about <laughs> um I posted it and needless to say she's not commented on me poetry again. Um, uh, but there we go. Uh, I didn't fall out with her though, which is good. Um good evening, Alan. Oh, Alan. Anyone watching the uh, the program last night would have known Alan had a, a right nightmare trying to get in and chat. But uh, good evening, Alan. Uh good to see you in the chat, mate. Andy Ford. Hi Steve, how much do you think we'll spend this summer? I know Stu on the professionals thinks it'll be over 200 million, but I think it'll be less than half that unless we sell a course. Wow. Well, Andy, first of all, I hope you're wrong. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of fog and a lot of confusion over this, Andy, because none of us really know how much we're going to benefit from, for example, qualifying for the Champions League, finishing in fourth place, Adidas deal seller deal right so four things there we can think of when does the finance from that affect ffp you might know i don't um i've given up trying to understand ffp i'm 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 of the hope that they're going to scrap it before i get the chance to try and work it out um but we're gonna let players go andy there are players out of contract who will be finally off our books which is great news um I think we'll sell players. So who are we going to sell? Um, I don't think we'll sell Bruno. And I don't think we'll sell Isaac. But I think we'll sell other players who at this moment in time would be considered first team players. Will it be Trippier? Will it be Wilson? Will it be Almiron? Will it be Longstaff? Will it be Miley? Um, who knows? But I would be surprised if we don't see one or two names that we would consider at this moment in time, first team players going out that door. Eddie Howe, in his press conferences, tells you week after week that he doesn't want anyone going anywhere. And I can understand that. I can I can well understand this. And after, after the injuries that we've had this season, you know, I would agree. I wouldn't let anybody go. Try and sign three or four players and not let anybody go because... You know, if we're going to have more more of the same next season, we need as big a squad as we can get. But we're going to lose goalkeepers this season, and we're going to need to replace them. We've got two key centre halves sitting out of the game now until December, and will they come back? Will they come back any you know with with the same kind of level of performance and fitness? Lots of questions to be asked, and and not many answers kicking around at the minute is the answer. Um. I, you know, listen, Stu, Stu and Mitch on the professionals and on the amigos and Steve Hasty always give you their opinion. I give my opinion, but we always give they always give their opinion. But their opinions are always based on things that they know or things that they pick up on. It comes as no surprise to me. And you've got to remember, I'm the facilitator. I run the channel. It's my channel. I ask the questions. We never plan a show. We don't sit down and plan the shows. The, the shows are all embryonic. So that's why on a flyer that we put out, it just says the three amigos, the professionals. We don't plan the show. So I, I can't tell you what we're going to talk about until I sit down at my computer half an hour before and I go, all right, what was in the news today? Oh, yeah, that, you know, we'll start with that. And then you guys 
in the chat, you lead it. And the guys will only ever give their opinion. But the three guys that I've just mentioned, I trust them and they don't feed you BS. They give you facts and they give you stuff that they might have picked up. And, and how many times now on this platform have we led and others have followed? And not just podcasters, but journalists. How many times have we said something on here and you've read it in the papers two or three days later, or you've read it online, or you've heard it on another podcast? I'm proud of that. I am proud of that because that shows you that we tell you the truth. And again, I, I keep reiterating this. I did this when I did the little private member show, which I do once a month. I reiterate the fact as well that this channel is set for over 18s, not under 18s. And apologies to ever uh, to anyone who you know ever wants to come on who's under 18, uh, but that's not what this channel's about. And I could get doubly amount of numbers if I change this to whatever it is, you know, 18 and under. I don't want that. I want this to be the thinking man's channel, the thinking woman's channel, and I want this to be for a slightly older audience. And the demographics that I've got now are perfect. It's like when I used to do true crime and, and football on this platform. At the time, it was locked down and it was, it's what I was doing. Um, but I listened to what people in the chat said, and predominantly people in the chat wanted football. And that's what I did. I took the true crime away. And it's flourished. The channel's flourished. It's it's a lot nicer place for starters, but also the demographics good. The, the the range I can see where where people are watching. I can see how many people have subscribed and who haven't. How many people who watch the show are subscribers and who aren't. And to be honest, that's why I'm going down this subscribers only route in the chat because I want more people to subscribe. It's not a great it's not a great ask to ask somebody just to subscribe to the channel. And, and that's why I'm pushing it a little bit. But I've gone off a little bit on a tangent there, Andy, but I hope that answers your question. Yeah, but Roger, I, you know, if you can get onto Facebook, mate, I do push them up there more or less, more, more or less each day now. So um, jump on there. I feel like I'd be tonight. What does that say about the Premier League? But well, they're playing, they're playing Lille, aren't they? Um, and I know that we're getting beat 1-0. I haven't, I haven't watched it. Um, I haven't seen what the, the results are. I'm a little behind in the chat, by the way. So if anybody does, uh, if anyone thinks I'm ignoring them, I will try and get. I will try and get to you. All competitions, Europa Conference League. Ah, oh, two 0 to Lille. Yeah. Okay. So, what does it say about the Premier League? It doesn't say anything about the Premier League. It just says Lille have prepared better and they're they're on course for victory tonight, aren't they? Um, bad week in Europe so far. Who would have seen Man City and uh, Arsenal crashing out? Arsenal, perhaps, but Man City. Wow. That was a shock, that, like. Um, no British team in the Champions League final this year. FIFA will be happy anyway. Tom Dixon. Question for Steve. Do you think Callum Wilson might feature for Newcastle against Palace? Well, he's back in training, Tom. And that's good. That's a good thing. He's back in training. Great to see him. And, and what, what a perfect time for Callum Wilson to come back. And the guy scores goals. Yes, he gets injured. But the guy scores goals. And now we've got double trouble. For, for teams that we've got to face in the next, you know, five or six games. We've got Alexander Izak, who is in the form of his life, who is fully fit and firing all cylinders. And now we can take him off and put Callum Wilson on, um, or we can play them together. So, yes, I do think he'll be on the bench. Um, but what a great option for, for us to have going into these final few games in our push for, for European football. And, if we can go to Palace and win and then beat Sheffield United, we're four points behind Spurs and they'll get the jitters. They will be panicking if we are four points behind them. Um, it's all to play for. And I, uh, like I said on the North East Footy Brady show the other morning, I'm absolutely delighted. And I said it on the on Jordy's here, Jordy's there as well. I'm delighted that I said the season was over. Um, and, and, and other people have said that because it's kicked them up the backside. And Eddie Howe's probably used that as a motivational tool. Um, the, the people have written our season off and, and, you know, we're still fighting, you know, a bit like Kevin Keegan, I guess. We're still fighting for this title. Chicken Oriental, red or brown sauce, Steve. Depends what I'm having, mate. Um, it really depends what I'm having. That's why in my poem today, I, I mentioned red or brown sauce, HP or Heinz. Um, I, I used to just have butter and tomato sauce on a bacon sandwich. But now, 
I do like a bit of brown sauce with a bacon sandwich occasionally. So I tend to have red with most things, but brown sauce is a bit of a guilty pleasure. Giopardini, I've always thought that when I would meet anyone famous, anyone, the only one I'd be starstruck by would be she But unless they get lost and knock on my door, it's unlikely to happen. You know what? I met she Um I met she when I was doing the fanzine. So it'll have been 95, 96. And I got a chance to interview him at St. James's Park. Again, it's on this channel. And um, there's a photograph of me handing the fanzine over in the old Melbourne reception. Um, and I've got to be honest, yeah, Shira, Shira and Keegan are the two that when I first met them, I was a bit overawed, but regained my composure. Um, yeah. Um, uh, you know what? I, it's a difficult question, Chicken Orion. I read you, Ronnie. I, I got on very well with both, men. Uh, Jason, Steve, what season did you start going regular at the games? Well, my first game, of course, was 84. Keegan's last game, 2-2 against Liverpool in the Afida Zane Kev game. So 85-86 was my first... 84-85 uh, was the first season that I went to games on my own. Um, my dad wasn't keen with football, hooliganism, etc. on us going to games. And I was only 13 then. Uh, so from my perspective, I my first full season, home and away, was 85-86. Uh, but I did go to games in 84-85. At one point, my dad didn't want us to go, um, and I got grounded. Um, and I snuck, well, I, I sneaked to the game, uh, and I got grounded again. But that's why I didn't go to as many in 80, 80 45. But I was following the team then, uh, the, the Jack Jolt era, of course. Um, and then going into the Willie McFall era was me, that was my first and you know, me, me first proper season. Uh, where did Newcastle get got to finish now to guarantee Europe with City losing last night? I, it's seventh, isn't it? Seventh's the bottom, the bottom rung now, isn't it? I think for um for Newcastle. So top seven is where they need to be. I, I don't know whether it stretches down to eighth. I'm sure somebody in the chat will correct me if I'm wrong. What about Kevin Keegan? He is the emotional heartbeat of Newcastle United. He is judge. Um, he certainly is. Um, there's no doubt about it. He's he's somebody who would be a great ambassador at the club, but at the moment he's just happy looking after his grandkids. George has got no intention of coming back to Newcastle and and being part of, of this at all. Met Beardsley and Ian Bogey at Delible Road School as a kid. Uh, he taught me how to trap a ball and lay it off. My favourite player too. Yeah, Ian Bogey sits next to me at the match, Derek. He's a great guy. Uh, got a lot of time, but Ian, and, and Ian's still working at the club as well, of course. Evening, Ian. Titus Bramble or Andy O'Brien? I'd say they were 50-50, me, you know. I think Titus got a bit of a... Titus got a raw deal, you know. Titus Shambles was his nickname, but Titus wasn't bad, you know. On his day... He was a beast and he was a, a big, big player at Newcastle. Andy O'Brien scored against the Mackhams, though, didn't he? Um, so, again, he, uh, you know, he's, he's up there and he even got his own song. So, possibly Andy O'Brien shades it just for scoring against the Mackhams. Don't get a bigger band of boxer than Mayweather. So, that's impressive to get such a compliment, too. Yeah, I mean, he asked for his photograph with me, which, again, was bizarre um, because of the interview. And... Yeah, I, I got on. I got on really well with him. I, I promoted Mayweather twice. I put him on at the Fed in Dunstan the first time. The second time to do it at the City Hall was unique. And the first one I didn't interview him. It was I got I, I allowed Pete Graves to interview him from Sky. He he really wanted to do it, so I said, yeah, I didn't have a problem with it. But you know what? The second time I thought I'm going to do it myself. Um, he's such a global superstar. And of course, my opening question was, if you remember, we hadn't been taken over at this point. Are you still interested in buying Newcastle United? And of course, the question and the answer went global. It went worldwide that he was still interested in buying Newcastle. So that was uh, that was unique as well. Do you think Fury versus Usyk fight will go ahead? Yeah, it'll go ahead, mate. Yeah, the tickets are on sale now. Um, I know I know Fury's management team very well, and they're, they're busy selling tickets as we speak. So yeah, one hundred percent, it'll go ahead. And if Fury wins that, do not be surprised if we get the big super fight that we won before the end of the year. That's what I would say. Um, I met Manny Pacquiao in Vegas a few years back. We were on the same floor at the MGM and saw him in a lift pleasant fella. You know what? That guy is inspirational as well, Mozza. I'm, I'd love to meet him. I'd love to get him to the UK. I know his English isn't great. Um, but from my perspective, he was he was the better fighter. And if he'd fought Mayweather when they should have fought in that prime, I think Pacquiao wins that fight. But, just the way it goes, isn't it? Um, but yeah, and and, and he all of the, all of these prize money he used to go and push it back into his community, didn't he? You know, he obviously keeps a lot for himself, but he wasn't the 
whereas Money Mayweather is all about himself counting his money. He used to donate a lot of charity. I'm sure Mayweather does give some to charity as well, but it was just the visual stuff that you saw from Pacquiao going to villages and paying for things. Absolutely fantastic. The person at NUFC who touched my heart more than anyone else was Kath Cassidy. The tea lady got to know her and love for everything Newcastle shone through. Yeah, she was she was really nice. There's been some great people at Newcastle over the years that I got that I got to know really well. Uh, I mean, Kath was lovely. Uh, privileged to have had a cup of tea off her on more than one occasion when I've been in the press room over the years. Um, you know, I've got to know. I've got to know a lot of security staff. You know, there's some top top lads at, 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 and top people who some of them do the tours now. Others just work on a match day. There's too many to mention. I wouldn't want to upset one of them by not mentioning them. But the, all, the, the lads know who they are, and and you know, I've, I've got a lot of time for them. Um, but yeah, there's been some great staff over the years at St James's Park, and yeah, I, I'm no, no no surprise to hear you paying a compliment to Kath Bless her. Uh, we tune into matters, listen to the crack. The lads and the lasses and humour never seems to lack. Friday's other business laugh. We nearly burst. It's back on again tomorrow. No doubt Mozza will be first. I like it, darling. I like what you did there. Very good. Uh, Blue Rhythm Boy, good evening. If you could only listen to one artist or band and no one else, who would you pick and why? The Beatles would be my choice, mate. Um, I mean, although the jam were my first band that I really enjoyed listening to and followed and had posters on my wall and bought all the, the vinyl, the Beatles were special. Um, and the Beatles, I, I, I never get sick of listening to the Beatles. And each album, each album progressed and is different. Um, so you know, it would have to be it would have to be the Beatles full stop. Um, got a great back catalogue. Um, I, I do like music which has got lyrics that you can understand and listen to, and they're still the best band that's ever been for me. Um so yeah, the Beatles is the uh, the answer to to that. Leal two, Villanil three two on aggregate. There we go. I didn't uh, I didn't know that. So uh, I didn't know that. Um, is how our Hughes, meaning he'll be binned off as soon as the foundations are down and a top pedigree manager becomes available, or do you see him building a dynasty at Newcastle? You know what? This answer could have changed a few times this season. Uh, it really, really could. Um, because he, I, it had the feeling of being an Eddie Howe for me, uh, a, a, a Mark Hughes for me. Um, but yeah, I I genuinely think at the moment the owners will give him an opportunity to progress. Next season is a big one, but I think I don't think Newcastle want to go down that avenue with sacking managers at the moment with FFP either. Um, but I think he's earned. I think he's got enough in the bank and he's earned enough to to, to start next season and see how he does. I think if we have a similar season to this season, I think they may act. But at this moment in time, I can see him building a dynasty at Newcastle, given the tools to do that. But he's got to be given the tools to do that. Good evening, Gordon. Will you be coming to Scotland for that NUSS charity golf out? Sadly, I can't, mate. I won't be able to make that, but I, I wish you all the best of luck with that. I know Taylor's doing a cracking job with you guys up there. So uh, I will be back for another talking, though. That's, that's a certainty. Uh, the Premier League have done this behind the backs of the AFL. The lower tiers are on their knees. And the Premier League didn't have the decency to consult, let, uh, consult, let alone inform, discuss them. Well, that's just arrogance, isn't it? It really, really is. It's just, just the arrogance of things. Ian, question for Steve. Even though FFP is holding us back, do you think we will spend a decent amount this summer? Well, I answered that a little bit earlier. I, I do think we will. Yeah, 100%. I'd need to see some uh, replay income generation for the lower leagues to see if there's something to actually complain about for them. I don't think there really is. All right, okay. So you're having a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a, a tet a tet in there. Uh, Steve, did you have a look at that YouTube channel that did three renditions of the new SGP? Yeah, we're going to discuss that on the amigos. I know we're doing plan things, but I did mention last night that we were going to look at it because I hadn't had a look at the video, but I have now. Um, yeah, very impressed. I like the third option, Derek. If that uh, if that helps. Favourite bar that's no more? What a great question. The Farmer's Rest, Nicholas. Uh, the Farmer's Rest, opposite the old Newcastle United Supporters Club at Haymarket. It is now Marks and Spencers. Um, that would be me, number one. The Broken Doll um, would be me, number two, which would have been on the way to what's now the Red Hoof Bridge. Um, the Broken Doll was superb. I saw lots of live bands in there over my student years. And... Um, the Broken Doll would be second. And the third one, The Printer's Pie. 
on uh, Puddin Chair. I used to love that bar. That was great. It was good in the old days when uh, when Billy used to have it. Um, it's a proper bar. That's proper proper match day bar. Three. There's your there's your top three. Um, any more questions? Let's zoom down. Got to get past the uh, comments. Yeah, we'll go Blue Rhythm Boy. Will you see uh, the Amy Winehouse film? Being a music fan, any thoughts on it? it? Seems relevant the addiction and recovery theme. Yeah, I mean, I didn't meet Amy, but my best mate was very good friends with her, and he, um, you know, he looked after her a lot. Um, obviously, at my, you know, my background was heavily involved. I was heavily involved in security uh, between the ages of um, what twenty one and you know thirty. 38, 39. Um, I did a lot of close protection for people as well, you know, down in London. But I didn't look after Amy. But um, yeah, I will go and see it. Um, I'm, I'm sure it'll be a wonderful tribute. And she, you know, by all accounts, she was a wonderful, wonderful, uh, a wonderful woman. About 110 away from 52,000, Tom. And uh, not not far off, mate. Thanks, Steve. I've got Portery Corner, a bit of my MS South Northumberland newsletter, and I've written a couple. Good luck, Roger. It's good. It's therapeutic, writing a bit of poetry. Don't mention last night, uh, Steve. My head's still spinning. Oh, yeah, that's with uh, Alan, I guess, and uh, trying to log on. Um, Ian, good evening again. All I want to say, while this is Steve only chat, is that me and Steve don't always agree on everything, but Steve has always had my back on everything, which is more than I can say about many other pals. Well, thanks. Thanks, Ian. Um, career ambitions, says Steve Bennett. If any, whilst at school, and did you go on work experience? Steve, my main aim was being an actor, and it's funny where I've been today. I've been interviewing a couple of candidates for a position, and the, the interview process is, um, you know, it's quite extensive, it's been over two days, and that's why I've been quite busy. That's why the shows have all been a bit muddled this week. Um, but my the, the during the break, one of the people was asking us about school and what what i was like at school what my ambitions were and how did i become an actor this that and the other my ambition was always to be an actor and i was my first acting job was as a seven-year-old and i you know went on until i was 17 acting but because i wanted to be an actor and i knew i could act i didn't i didn't focus at school i didn't stick in at school so my career ambition was always to be an actor and then when things went pear-shaped, when I got to college, I got ripped off and I ended up basically saying, if that's acting, you can stick it. Um, basically, I did a pantomime for somebody, I got ripped off and uh, I didn't get an equity card and I just walked away from acting. And I ended up walking into the, the family business, which was a post office. And that's how I ended up being a sub postmaster for 10 years. So did I go and work experience? I did to a degree because I used to work in my grandparents' news agents at the side of the post office, and that was at the age of 13. And if the paper lad didn't turn up, I'd go and do the papers. Um, but I'd put the supplements in the magazine, then I'd serve in the shop. So that was my work experience. I worked in the family business. Um, to take the post office over, I went and did four weeks four weeks training, work experience at Burnham Field Post Office. Um, me, um, me Auntie Mary used to have the post, the post office there. And I, I passed with flying colours and came back and, and ended up working in the family business. So that's it, really. But career ambitions were always being an actor. I then, at the post office, wrote the fanzine, developed the fanzine, uh, the Mighty Quinn, which then became the number nine. That's when Sky took over and I then got jettisoned into doing interviews on the radio and TV. But then at the same time, I took a, a door job on. Somebody had asked us to work on the doors. It was never a career move. But I enjoyed it so much. I went from doing full time at the post office and part time on the doors to selling the post office and moving full time on the doors, which people made things bizarre. But I enjoyed doing the doors. I did it for 18 years and I was doing the doors, doing the fanzine. And that was my life. You know what I mean? And that, and that was it, really. Um, so it's weird the way my life panned out because then I needed an avenue off the doors. I went into events. I was doing events for my football team in Felon. Um, raising money for strips and league fees and stuff. That's how I ended up working with Supermac in 95. I got him to do a presentation night and, you know, I'd got put in touch with him by John Gibson and, you know, that was that. was that. And, and then moving from doing a small event like that where, you know, the overheads were minimal, I, I started, I thought, how can I get off the doors 
after 18 years, I needed an avenue off. I started putting events on and, you know, my events just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And from worrying about, a, you know, I don't know, like a 300 pound fee to pay for a speaker, you know, I went to, um, you know, I went to, to doing Floyd Mayweather at the City Hall, which, you know, the overheads for that were 80,000 um, pounds. You know, and if I don't make that, I've got to pay the, I've got to pay it. So weird, mate, weird. Um, I've always lived my life to the full and I've tried to do things in the right way. Um, regrets, I've got a few, of course, but at the same time, I did get back into acting. And um, again, that's through my own hard work and endeavour. I got into act. I did extra work for six years. I networked. Then I went back to college at a, G a GCSE in drama at the age of 36, a Tuesday night course. And then I went and did a, a full-time degree as a 37-year-old bloke and graduated at 40 and then represented myself, resigned as an extra, represented myself for years as an actor, got a good part in a film. And then I, I got an agent. And you know, the rest is history. So 12 years in now and you know, my IMDB is looking good and a few opportunities ahead, I hope. Um, that's all I can ask for. Um, I like this, Jules. I'll, I'll read this again because I did read this the other night. I said on Sunday show, NUFC Matters is my go-to channel for complex issues to be explained. No dramatics, no mistruths. I believe you must have a broad understanding and don't take at face value. Uh, thanks for that. Um, where else? Jason, if we finish sixth this season, is it a better season than last year? The amount of injuries have been shocking, and last year we got away without injuries in the main. You know what? If we finish sixth this year, I, Eddie Howe deserves all the plaudits. I mean, that's that'll be three incredible seasons. One, season one, keeping us up when all, uh, all looked lost. Two, getting us to a cup final and finishing fourth and getting us into the Champions League. Season three, if we finish sixth, even if we qualify for Europe, Jason, sixth, I wouldn't even say it. Sixth will be mental. But if we could finish seventh and qualify for Europe, mate, after where we were six or seven weeks ago, it's up there. It's up there with the others, 100%. Andy says, uh, thanks for answering my questions, Steve. Keep up the great work. Me and me pals love this channel. Andy, thanks very much, mate. That really does. Just those words mean it's always worthwhile doing it. It worries me people say we must sell before the end of June to balance the books. How much do we need to make up and dictate and who and uh, need to make up will dictate who we have to sell? I, listen, I just wouldn't worry, Stephen, about any of this. Uh, uh, you know, what will be will be. But, uh, you know, we, we've still got, you know, we've still got the right people in charge of the club. This isn't Mike Ashley era. Just sit back and enjoy it and we'll be all right, mate. That's that's probably the the the, the message we've tried to send out the last few weeks. Half of our Champions League group are in the semis. Exactly, Dave. Shows you how, you know, it was the group of death, all right. I can see PSG winning it, by the way. Mbappé, Mbappé will be the difference. And he'll, he always comes good in the later stages of tournaments. I knew City would lose the shootout and stated on X when I said City would win the shootout. Uh, and in the same post, congratulated Real for going through. Job at Jinxie. <laughs> I like it. Uh, when Newcastle United making an advert in Newcastle today, yeah, I think they've been filming this week, mate. Yeah, I think uh, I think so. Uh, John, good evening, Steve. Have you seen the latest video showing uh, the increased capacity standards and James's look like? If so, what do you make of it? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, it's what it could look like. Um, it's not what it's going to look like. So I genuinely think um, those three options are really, really interesting. Um, as I say, I liked option three, but it's going to be so it's going to be so interesting to see how and when they announce this. But it's going to need to be soon, um, especially with all these areas within the current ground being made into corporate areas and people being displaced. The need for more seats is becoming more and more apparent. And yeah, I, I just hope they can announce it and, and make a move on this sooner rather than later. But it, a lot is going to depend on what happens with the east stand and, and out the back of the east stand. That's got to be the that's going to be the most interesting part of any feasibility study for me. But yeah, those videos are they were interesting to see. Now that video was interesting to see. Certainly, it's a wonder Jack Charlton didn't put you off watching football. I like Big Jack. You know, I didn't like his style of football, but I I just I was just at that period. I was just I was just. You know what it's like when you're a kid. You're just enthusiastic, and you're getting in at half past one, paying your one pound fifty, sitting on the sitting on the concrete bollard. I used to sit in the scoreboard in my first in my first couple of seasons. 
Then I moved to the corner. Then I moved to the Leasers. Then I moved to the um, the Milburn Paddock. And then with a regeneration in the ground, I got moved from the Milburn Paddock into the Gallagher. And then we eventually moved from the Gallagher into the, the, the Milburn stand again. So, um, yeah, we've I've been around the ground. Never sat in the East stand. I sat in the East stand for Nobby Solano's debut against... When he, when he signed uh, for Newcastle for Dalglish, I sat there for a reserve game, but I've never sat in East stand for like a, a Premiership game or an FA Cup or a, or a League Cup. You used to live next door to Ian Bogie's mom in, in, the, in the 80s. All right, interesting, Derek. Um, Paul Patterson, how many players does Steve think that we will get this summer? Some people are going to be disappointed by the numbers as we can't sign half a dozen players. I think four. Centre-back, centre-forward, back-up goalkeeper and one. I said, yeah, I have four or five players, maybe. Um, it depends how many leaves. You know, the, the big thing is, the big thing really is, it's the it's the FFP, and I, and I really don't know enough about it. I think if we let two goalkeepers go, we'll be bringing two goalkeepers in. I know we've signed a youngster, haven't we, um, a, young, a younger player, but he's not going to be first team, is he? So, yeah, I... I I think anything between four and six, but it depends on who we, it depends on who goes and who we let go. And don't forget as well, you know, we could bring Jan Kuba in here back, and he could end up being part of the first team squad. But I think as well, how must be looking at the likes of Joe White, Parkinson, Miley, of course, and thinking actually we've got youngsters we can bring him through here. And don't forget young Harrison that was signed from Man City, who is supposed to be already ahead of Miley and better than Miley. He could be part of the first team pool next year. So maybe some of these players we're bringing through might be able to take the Premier League by the scruff of the neck. Yeah, there's Tony Towards a legend. He's the longest serving member of staff at St. James's Park. And um, Tony's not a name that would be common. Uh, you know, not many people would know who Tony was, but he's a top, top man, Tony. And uh, yeah, I got introduced to him right at the very start of my Newcastle supporting days and never you know never forgets you always comes up and speaks to me if i'm you know if i see him at the game and he's a he's a lovely guy too and he top top bloke and when i worked at the club as well he you know he's very helpful um oh alan different memberships that's nice of you mate thank you very much um i, I know some people can do that as well that's great uh hi steve do you think minty will be part of the squad funny that Donald, i've just mentioned that um what do you think he'd be out on loan again my heart says he'd be out on loan um, I'd love to see him. I, I mean, I'm assuming my head sees he would see him out on loan. My heart, I'd love him to stay. I think, I think he's, I think he would be one of these people who who would take to the Premiership. Um, and I, don't, I think people are detrimental about the Dutch league. Oh, it's not as good as ours. Blah blah blah. But look, it's still it's still the top league in their country. Um, they've just beaten their rivals six 0 and he's just scored two goals and got an assist. He's in double figures. Um, Kids doing something right. It's whether he fits into our team, and you know, Eddie Howe's got to look at the preseason friendlies and say, is that is that going to work? You know, is, is that going to be something that is that is, is he going to be able to fit in? Is he going to be able to bring something to the squad? So big summer for him, I think. It'll be interesting. Um, I, I presume you're asking Alan, not me. That broken doll, Craig. Yeah, what a bar that was, man. Honestly, um, I don't have any photographs of myself there. I'm not sure whether people from college have, but um. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to be able to see some photos from back in them days. You didn't have cameras back in them days. Certainly, you had mobile phones. You had cameras were wound on film, but you, you, you just didn't. Uh, you just didn't take photographs when you were when you were our age. Um, at that age. Question for Steve: For all practical purposes, eleven letters, starting with an E. For all practical purposes. Well, Ian, after the day I've had, it's too long in the day for these kind of things. If you listen to the northeast footy bracket on a morning as well, I, 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 I'm useless with those kind of things. Craig Lee, Steve, who would you most like to see wear the black and white in the future? Phil Foden, no doubt about it. Phil Foden, Craig, I'd love to see him in, in a black and white shirt. Uh, Steve, if you were designing the Adidas kits for next year, what would you do and what would you avoid? Proper size, uh, proper size black and white stripes <laughs> for starters. Don't mess around with that. Um, I like the V-neck collar. I'm not so much a granddad collar fan. You know, I love, I just love the old, I look, the simple, the better. I loved the 83, 84 strip because it was my first strip, but I love a grey way strip as well. Um, I think we've done our green and white thing with Saudi, although I think we'll end up doing one. You know, do we really, 
you know, do we really suit green? I would go for black and white and grey as your first two. They're not going to do that, but that's what I would do. Quite like the blue one this year. I bought all three tops this year and I bought them all from the club. Um, but yeah, I would, um, I would I would avoid the green. I would go for grey. If we could get a grey in there, then I would go for grey. But make sure those black and white stripes are, are the right, the right, exactly the right demographic, please. Uh, the right size, the right, the right distance between them. Yeah, I've already mentioned that, Tom. Um, I, I'd like to, I'd like to keep them. I think. Um, I'd like to go and see it. I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'm going to be able to. I've got a few, uh, a few things going on at the back end of this month, but. Ed Wolf, the great player, right? And I will de definitely try and get to see it if I can. I did go to see um, Limelight uh, last week and I went to see the 39 steps straight after the Spurs game. So I have been to a bit of theatre the last couple of weeks. Jules, what you see with Steve Braith is genuinely what you get. Plus, really good listener, good friend, no agendas, no dramatics, dodgy singer, mind. Jokes aside, beware of some who pretend to be. Oh, thank you, Jules. That's really kind. What would your ideal film rule be? You know what, Donald? Um, I'd like to play something different. Um, something out of my comfort zone. I'm sick of playing gangsters. I'm sick of playing villains. I'm sick of playing football hooligans. I'm sick of playing bent coppers. Um, you know, I'd like to do something comedic. Uh, a comedy film would be ideal. You know, I could play a vicar. I could play the Morty vicar. Don't know. I could easily do that, but something like that. Nicholas, uh, the Duke, or if we're going Gateshead, the ship and the old Bacchus. Yeah, I mean, listen, mate. I do miss the ship. The ship was my stamping ground, as you know, Nicholas. I love that place. Um, and the Duke, the Duke of Cumberland on Sunland Road was absolutely fantastic. Great place. And the old Bacchus. Yeah, good. Borgoynes was good as well. I used to sell the fanzine in there back in the day. Uh, that was good. Remember buying the fanzine at the post? That was Jed. Um, you're always in me thoughts, mate. Uh, you and your wonderful family from uh, from Wardley. And um, God bless the band, mate. I'm, I'm so pleased we managed to do something for that charity uh, event many years ago. 1996 now, if I remember rightly. But uh, yeah, great memories. Uh, loved all the family, mate. Edward, if you could interview any Newcastle player, past or present, who would it be? I'd love to interview, and this is following off what Malcolm said a little bit the other night, Huey Gallagher and Jackie Milburn. I'd love to have met them and, and interviewed them. I'd, I'd met Jackie Milburn. Um, in that game that I went to in 83, 84, Keegan's last, I was in the director's box and I was sitting next to Jackie Milburn. I was sitting next to Bobby Cowell, Joe Harvey. I got I got them all to sign the autograph book, but uh, again, there was no cameras in them days. You know, I didn't have a camera. So, you know what? It was uh, it was it was quite a unique opportunity uh, for, for me that. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to interview them guys. Love to interview them. Uh, question, Steve. What do you like to do in your spare time? What spare time, Andy? Uh, Spend it with my family, mate. Um, spend it with my family and spend it with my friends. I do like to go walking, Andy. Um, I walk a lot. I don't drive, so I do like to walk. Um, I just like I like getting out and seeing people as well. Um, obviously, I like to go to. I, I like to go to. You know, I, I like to go to good places to eat as well. Um, I'm very sim very simple in that respect. I've got no. You know, I, I, my my. Partying days, clubbing days, and all that are well behind me now. Um, probably had a midlife crisis, like a lot of blokes do. Uh, notice I said blokes there uh, in my forties, um, late nights and coming back late. But I've, you know, I've got an understanding missus, and um, I got I got through that period unscathed and uh, with a with a clean conscience. And yeah, um, yeah, I like to read. I like to go and watch films. I like to go out and have food. Um, I like to spend time, you know, with my family uh, as well in doing all of that and, and with my friends. Very, very simple, really. I don't drink a great deal either. But when I do drink, I'll, uh, you know, in it's in it with Stu Penman and with Neil Mitchell and with Steve Hastie uh, and with John. Um, yeah, I probably have one or two bottles too many. And I've got to start saying I must not do a podcast when I'm on red wine because it's never a great idea. Uh, it becomes repetitive. And I know you all have a laugh, but it's not really good, is it? Um, but yeah, but it only happens twice a year. Uh, if you could play for Newcastle United, what team would you like to be part of? 83, 84, Marty, the promotion team. I'd love to have played. It's funny because somebody asked me this on the breakfast show this week. Um, it was one of them things that we, we do every every morning. Um, 
And I, I said I'd love to have played centre half alongside Glenn Roder, mainly because Glenn could have carried me. John Anderson could have carried us as well. Uh, and I would have had Davy Mack in front of us. And I would have had Keegan Waddle and Beardsley. So if it made a mistake, they would have just gone up the other end and scored Marty. So I, I think I would have been all right in that team. And with Kevin Carr behind us with his list of clean sheets and penalty saves, if I give a penalty away, Kevin would have saved it and he would have kept a clean sheet, uh, plenty of clean sheets. So that's the team to be in. I wasn't good enough to play in the entertainers, Marty, but I think I could have played in the 83, 84 team. Um, no, I wasn't going to sing, Derek. Don't worry. I'll keep that for Friday. Keep me singing voice for Friday. I've already got a couple that people have sent in. Uh, let's go again. Is there any more questions? I'll stay on a little bit longer. Neil, have you ever in a live match threw the ball back? Oh, nah. I did it once. I kicked it back on Waddles League debut versus Shrewsbury as a young teenage lad. I love that. You know what? I've been so close to the ball on numerous occasions, but I've never, never had it. In fact, you know what I'd love to do, Neil, is when it comes into the um, <laughs> it comes in the crowd as those people who headed back. Um, I did have a rather unfortunate incident, which some of you will know and some of you won't, at Queen's Park Rangers a few years back, mind. It was a promotion season in the early noughties when uh, we went to QPR. Um, I got a I got a, uh, a corporate ticket because I'd missed out on the away game. I didn't think I could go. And I got a corporate ticket off Nicky Butt and uh, Peter Ramage. And they didn't tell us that it was in the middle of the QBR end. And basically, there was a couple of people in front of us were getting uh, some abuse. It was a man and his daughter. And the, the kid was about 11 or 12. And she was getting abuse from a guy in a stone island, a cockney, who we'd just gone 1-0 up. And he was given this young, uh, this this granddad and his daughter, my granddaughter, had some stick. So I kept my mouth shut. My mate kept my mouth shut. But then another Jordy gets involved, and it was starting to get a bit aerated. So I chipped in just to make sure he knew that you know there was there was a few more than him. It's a bad idea that because next thing you know, the the kid starts waving his hands and shouting and bawling, and there's just a load of people started piling forward. So I jumped, um, literally. Otherwise, I was going to get battered by these kids and I just jumped over a, over over about three or four rows like most other people did and landed in somebody's uh, cup of soup uh, it turned out it was another, another Newcastle fan uh, so yeah we got escorted out and we got put in the uh, we got put in the away end but um, that was probably the most memorable for all the wrong reasons at QBR and someone took a photograph of it and I remember getting into the away end and some lads who I knew singing He's here, he's there, he flies through the air, Stevie Wraith, Stevie Wraith. But uh, I cut my head that day as well. It was, um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't It was a pleasant experience. Oh, here's Ian. Roses are red, my language is blue. Here's a fiver to spend on peeps that matters to you. Everyone get doing to the end of season do, lads and lasses. Ian, very good. I'm inspiring you, Ian. And thanks for that. That'll go into the Malverno Fund. Um, we'll have to get to Malverno, uh, sh shipped up to the uh, Irish Club. Um... Steve, regarding Tony Tower, never forgot to hold back tickets, made sure me and my two kids got season tickets after a uh, patient died and still remembered me years later. He is, he's a, he's a top, top bloke. Who would you support before Newcastle were formed? Newcastle East End, Newcastle West End. Oh, my God. Um, well, often people say the West End is the best end, don't they? Um, but I'm going to be controversial and say I would have supported Newcastle East End. I used to play against Newcastle East End on a Sunday afternoon. And the Sunday afternoon league, so I would have supported Newcastle East End. Um, oh yeah, Derek Bonderbot is the channel where the three SJP renditions are. The Spurs strip colour was awful, a bit like the team. Yeah, I didn't like that. It was grey, wasn't it? Neil says, has 55 degrees north been on TV in the last 10 years? I fancy watching it again. I've got it on DVD, mate. Um, I've never seen it on TV, and I've not had any repeat fees. So if I haven't had repeat fees. It definitely hasn't been on. Uh, Vera is probably the one that I get the most repeat fees off. That That's on all over the world. Incredible. I haven't watched The Way of Stephen. And believe it or not, I have got box sets, which I need to get watched. And the only time I get a chance to watch them is when I'm on the train. Now, I am watching at the moment. You see, I love retro stuff, 70s stuff. I'm busy watching something which I'll have watched as a kid and I can't remember the storylines. So I'm watching Secret Army again. And I'm loving it. I'm up to episode 12. But I only watch them on the train. I tend not to watch them in the house. You've got other stuff you want to watch in the house. And I don't have much time to watch stuff. But on a train down to London, I've got three hours. So I can get through with three episodes. Um, but yeah, 100%. Um, 
you know, I'll give that a watch, mate. I definitely think it's worth watching. I've been told a lot about it. Um, but yeah, thank you, Chicken Oriental. Um, I know you're in and out of the chat these days, but uh, always good to see you back in, mate. I know you've been a big supporter of the channel over the years. Ian's a poet and he didn't know it. I love it. Alan, most embarrassing moment. White pants, tuxedo princess, revolving dance floor, dodgy stomach, dancing away, followed through, couldn't get off the spinning floor, taxi driver cost a fortune, never went back. <laughs> and is that how you met Mozart? <laughs> we have seen you under the influence, Steve. I know, Gary. Um, I'm not bothered, mate. We, we, listen, that's, a, that's the best way to be, mate. Be yourself. And we all need to have a drink at some point, as long as we can control it. I mean, like I say, getting back to Joe Allen, mate, you know, Joe's, a, Joe's, Joe's finally come out and said he's an alcoholic. And I'm so proud of him for doing that. Um, and I know a few people who are in recovery and, um, you know, that, that, that's never been something that's been a problem with me. I'm not, I haven't got an addictive personality and I, I don't get addicted to stuff. I can see the signs of people, unfortunately. Um, and all I can say to those people is, you, you know, I can't help you. You've got to help yourself. And I'd said that to Joe on more than one occasion. Joe's now managed to, to finally see the light. And he, he had to go low to get high, to get back back on top. But he's there now, you know what I mean? And, and over the course of the next couple of months, I'll Joe will become part of NUFC. I was going to bring him in. I've always wanted to bring him in. Joe's, Joe's gold. Joe is... Joe is not only is he a top bloke and he's a godfather to me kids, but he's also he's also somebody who's got great knowledge, great football knowledge, great contact, and he's good, got good banter. And um, I'm just so proud of him for doing what he's done. So yeah, but me under the influence, yeah, not very often, but when it happens, it's in style, um, and it's usually sponsored by Red Wine. I once met George Robledo when he went to a Newcastle game in 1981. He signed my program versus Orient. I still got it on oh, Neil. Never met him. Never met Robledo. Thank you, uh, Roger. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I've, I've gone in extra time here. Um, loving the radio show, Steve. Great entertainment and variety. Yeah, difficult morning this morning, unfortunately, because um, Rai's uh, wife's back in hospital. He lives in Australia. So those of you who don't know, uh, I do a breakfast show on tuneradio.co.uk. You can get it on, a, on your DAB radios. But I do a breakfast show Monday to Friday, 7 to 9, I got asked to do it by Dave Roberts, who used to work with Sky, who I got to know when, you know, I used to do talk about Newcastle back in the 90s on Sky on a regular basis. And he asked me to be part of it and do the Newcastle side of things. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, we struggled to get a Macam at first, but now we've got one called Ted, who lives in Cyprus. And we bounce off each other. It's great. It's a completely different breakfast show in the morning. So if you want to avoid the doom and gloom of, everyday news and you just want to listen about Newcastle, Sunderland, Middlesbrough, Hartlepool, Gateshead um, and usually us taking the mick out of referees, you know, rules of the game, um, you name it, whatever's controversial, whatever's in the news, then we will do. So this morning we're talking about Erling, Erling Haaland has trademarked his, um, his hair. Unbelievable. Um, you know, we're talking about the, the new rules that they're talking about bringing in into football, um, you know, obviously we're talking about FA Cup replays potentially being stopped, but also talking about, um, you know, the the Amanda Stavely situation. So, you know, it, it could be anything. It's a fluid show and we always have little challenges on as well. So get yourself, you know, get yourself onto that seven to nine. You, know, you don't have to listen for the whole two hours, but if you want to join us, you can do it. And if not, get yourself onto Spotify and look for the Northeast Footy Brecky and you can listen to it as a, as a podcast. Your birthday in the cricket club. All you did was say thank you. You got the mic and went on for half an hour. Mortal. Yep, that was me fiftieth. That was a good. That was a good one. That Nicholas. Um, and then I danced to all my favourite rave tunes for the last hour, which was great with me daughters, which was fantastic. Uh, did you double for John Travolta? Says Dunnell um, to Alan. Possibly in them. Um, not in that state though. Are you excited for next year? Do you think you'll get into the Champions League? Mark Wright. Good evening, mate. Hope you're well. Um, I'm always excited when the new season comes around. It, it, unfortunately, as a Newcastle fan, it's always full of false optimism, isn't it? We always think we're going to do this, that and the other, and then we don't. Last season was a complete shock um, to get into the Champions League and to get to a cup final. That was a complete shock. And this season's been a complete shock because of all the, because of all the injuries. 
Um, but again, it'll be a shock if we manage to get Europe after having all these injuries. So I am excited for next year. Um, do I think we'll get in the Champions League? If we have the squad that we've got this season and don't have any injuries, I still think Newcastle is more than capable of getting Champions League with this squad and they, don't any, and they didn't let anybody go. I think with some quality additions, I think Newcastle could go a bit further than Champions League. I think they could, they could give Man City and Arsenal a run for their money at the top of the table. But they need, they need to bring in the right players. It's all about recruitment, Mark. Um, Jobadini says he threw the ball to Given. I was halfway up the Gallagher and some uh, went so far and landed perfectly above his head. He gave me a thumbs up. It was in the warm up, though. <laughs> all I ever wanted to be was a mascot until they spawned to help the agent. It's lost to me. Oh, well, yeah, mas a mascot. And I never got put forward for that. I, quite, I could have quite fancied that, to be honest. Question for Steve out of all the players in Northern Ireland to play for the tune, who was your favourite? Um, I think I mentioned my favourite player from, from Northern Ireland, and that was David McCreary. Um, combative, versatile um, midfield player who came to Newcastle from Manchester United and, and was, was absolutely awesome. And a little story, I went to watch Gateshead against Newcastle after Newcastle had clinched promotion that year. I think Newcastle won the game 7 or 8-1. And me and my dad stood outside the changing rooms at Gateshead to get the autographs of the Newcastle players. And David McCreary came out and went, all right, John. Well, my dad's name is John. And I thought he knew my dad. So for years, I thought my dad was friends with David McCreary. It was only a few years, like a few years ago, that I realised that John is an affectionate term that's given by Irish people to people who they're speaking to and they don't know the names. So that was that uh, shattered. West End, the best end. <laughs> I've started something now. Uh, West End is the best end. Uh, Depot West End, says Moza. Um, who do you think having a tune badge in the style of Chelsea's with a bit of holographic design remaining the 80s club badge, Panini stickers? I did like the old NUFC badge. Like I did really like that. I really did. Which episode of Vera are you in? I missed that. I'll have a look back if you let us know. Oh, God, what's it called? Hmm. Bear with us, bear with us, bear with us. Vera episode series. Now, was it three or four? Was it three episode list? It's, you know, it's on the tip of my tongue. But can I remember what it was called? Uh, Vera, all episodes. Bear with us, I'm on IMDB. So, so difficult to, to find it. And it's... When I see it, I'll remember it. Hold on. Easy, easy to find out. What I should have done originally was type my name in. And... Here we go. Right. Okay. Not not the greatest part of the podcast, this I'm sure, but um, I will find it now because otherwise it's just going to bug me. Uh, Vera, Big Pete. Here we are. 2016. Oh, what was the episode? What's it called? It hasn't got the name. Damn oh, hell. I will find it. If it's the last thing I do tonight. I kept thinking it was called the glass slipper, you know, but it wasn't the glass slipper. It was something it was something completely different. Um one episode. The Sea Glass, series six, episode four. There you go. Bullseye. Well done, Joe Allen. Yeah, well done, uh, Ian, 100%. Which play, away player has given the greatest performance you've seen at St. James's Park? Mine was Steve Bull. You know what I was going to say, Steve Bull? Um, greatest performance other than Steve Bull. 
God, I'm trying to think of trying to think of games which you know Newcastle were completely dominated by one player. You know, Matt Letizia probably comes to mind. I mean, just for the goals he scored. Um, yeah, listen, I'm going to go with the same answer because Steve Bull, I was there that day, and he absolutely mullered us um, for Wolves. He got four goals that day, didn't he? I think it was four goals. Absolutely horrendous. But yeah, I would say Steve Bull, it was, it was just, he just dismantled us. All addictions are crippling, but booze is a nightmare due to the social acceptance. Joe Allen should be proud of himself. I look forward to meeting him hopefully. You will do, mate. You will do. Some good photographs of him uh, in and around Newcastle this week, I've noticed on people's social media, which is great. They should let you do a music DJ hour. Neil, you know what? YouTube in America allow you to use music without copyright. And it's something I'd like to do because I'd like to do a music hour show on here rather than on rather than on Tune Radio. But we'll see. I think I think the breakfast show will be having a rest in, in the summer. So I think I'll probably do a show of some sort. But yeah, um, 100%, I think I will do that. Stephen Kennedy, can you tell those who don't know the sheer cleverness of the writers and cast of 39 Steps? Um, I, brilliant. Honestly, it was really good. It's really good that I don't know when anyone's anyone's anyone else has seen it, but it was absolutely brilliant. Thanks, mate. Nicholas. I listen, drop us your number on um, X, mate. Uh, inboxes. I, I will be heading back to the felon soon, so let's have a, a catch up. Uh, my mate was a Sunderland supporter who died, and his last wish was to be stuffed and placed in his normal seat at the next Sunderland game. He still went home at half time. Sunderland were that bad. Dear me, O'Neill. I'm reading that out as well, thinking that I'm thinking you're being serious. Uh, who needs legs when you've got Fabian Shea? Uh, Keith Gillespie was good. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, no doubt about that as well. Um, any more questions? Yeah, the sea glass, Jovadini, you got it. Um, good evening, Emily. Steve, which of your which of which of your work are you most proud of as an actor, Keith? Because you know what, I haven't had as much. Um, I haven't I haven't had great roles, you know, on TV. Um, I, I mean, Fifty Five Degrees North was great, but I didn't have many words in it. Um, Vera, the same, great to be on with Brenda Bleffin, but didn't have as many words. Rise of the Foot Soldier was great for me because that was a bit of a launching pad. Um, so I'm proud of that, but I am proud of a new breed of criminal because I wrote it, I produced it, and I starred in it. And I've got to be most proud of that, haven't I? Because that's my own work. And you know, to be able to come up with an idea and to get it all the way from the beginning to the to the end, for me personally, that's a hell of an achievement, Keith. And if you haven't seen it, give it a watch. All right, Steve Hexham Marketplace was closed last year for Canny Wild, all Vera's fault. Yeah, I can imagine she does close places down. Sorry about that, Steve. Thanks for your efforts to see Glass Me and the other half will have another look. Steve, my wife says that's the best acting I've ever done because it's the only time she's ever seen is in the kitchen. You'll get it when you watch it. Uh, Ron Seal in the house. Hi, Keith Rowe, the only true statue. Um, yeah, good to see Keith back in the chat. Uh, when Quinn scored four on his debut, Jim Beglin played for Leeds uh, that day. Don't think he liked us since. Yeah, that was a great game as well. I was at that. I didn't boycott that game like a few. Uh, Steve, can you express your love for Newcastle by the medium of dance? I will do it once. At the, I'll do it. I'll do it on the. I'll do it at the end of season. Do. Um, you took a good beating and rise of the foot soldier, mean Steve. Yeah, well, if you've watched the film, the bit where I get hit with a pool cue. We only had two balsa wood pool cues. So that meant I had to get it right in the first one or the second one. And I'm pleased to say I got it right in the first one, Chicken Oriental. So, yeah, Craig Fairbrass was very, very pleased that I managed to do that. OK, I've done an hour and 20 minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go off, get a cup at and uh, chill out for a bit, watch a bit of telly. Um, but thank you for everybody for joining us. If you haven't subscribed, uh, that's why I haven't been able to comment. Uh, so hit the subscribe button, hit the share button so people can get a chance to watch it and hit the like button as well. Yes, do definitely remind us, Moz, I will do it. And thanks, Neil. Thanks, everybody, for your great questions. I'll uh, endeavour to do another one of these next month. I will do a private members one as well. So if you do want to become a member, it's one ninety nine a month. You just need to hit join and um, that just supports the show. Yeah, Ian, cheers, mate. And yeah, five o'clock tomorrow for the Amigos. 
Um, do all our fans know on the 11th of May we were at home to Brighton? It would be of Jack and Melbourne's 100th birthday. That's a good one to remember that. Yeah, but listen, thanks everybody. Thanks, moderators. Chicken Oriental, good to see you in the chat. And the Keith Roll as well. Good to see you back, mate. Uh, take care, everybody. Have a good night. And uh, see you at five o'clock with the Amigos tomorrow. Take care. A big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins, telephone 0800 25 45 25 email inquiries at skipsandbins.com, website skipsandbins.com, easy contract free and pay-as-you-go waste collection. Thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, handmade in Cumbria, their website, mrvickys.co.uk, telephone 01768 210 102, or email info at mrvickys.co.uk. Thanks to United Group Travel. There are no strangers in our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. Their website, unitedgrouptravel.com. Email beverly.ugtl at gmail.com. Telephone 01670 632 460 or mobile 0791 666 4174. Thanks to Media Arts for the technical side of things. And you can also find us as a podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or other podcast providers. You can subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button underneath this video. Hit the all notifications bell so you don't miss a show. Hit the thumb up to like the channel and click share to share to your social media. If you want to join the channel, then click join for as little as $1.99 a month. If you want to become a member, for a one-off £25 payment, email john at nufcmatters.com or go to membership at the website nufcmatters.com. If you've got a smartphone, hold your camera over the QR code and it'll take you straight there. We also help the food bank on this channel. Go to nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk to the matchday bucket and you can leave a virtual donation today.